Okay, welcome back to another tutorial with finite elements. In this one, we're going to use beam elements to solve this uh, beam problem. Beam elements relate uh, two inputs, force and moment, to two variables, which are the displacement in the y direction and the angle of deflection, d1 and phi1. And for each element, we relate the forces, which is the force in a moment at node 1, to the displacement and deflection at node 1 through this uh, st stiffness matrix. So the steps we're solving are the same. Uh, develop a global stiffness matrix. Then we determine boundary conditions and unknowns and then we solve. And to develop the global stiffness matrix, we basically use uh, the principle of superposition. We take each, um, each s s stiffness matrix of each element and we superimpose it to the next one. So for instance, the first element is gonna be D1, Phi1, D2, and Phi2. And the second element is for nodes 2 and 3. So it's going to start from here and go to phi 3. And then the third element is going to be d3 to phi 4 and so on and so forth. All right, that's for the introduction. Next, we'll put it in the MATLAB. Okay, now here for the MATLAB part, we start as usual by clearing the screen, clearing all variables, uh, defining the number of elements as 4. E is uh, Young's modulus of elasticity, 210 gigapascals. I is the section modulus, which is given as 2 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. All of the units are in uh, meters, and so our answers will come out in meters. Total length is 12 meters, and the length L of each element is going to be the total length divided by the number of elements, which is 4. And then k, which we defined as the stiffness matrix for each element, it's not the global stiffness matrix yet, but it's a stiffness matrix for each element. And that's, as we saw, a 4 by 4 matrix relating the force and the forces and the moments to the movement or the amount that the beam deflects in the y and the angle of deflection phi at each node. So we start with defining that k equals uh, zeros 10 by 10. This is now we're doing the global stiffness matrix. So each um, the global stiffness matrix for the first element will simply equal the first um, small beam matrix or the matrix for the beam element. And in this case, I'm just going to do part of the global stiffness matrix because we know it's symmetric. So I'm not going to assign all of the values, only the diagonal and everything that's above the diagonal, as shown here. And then I will do a little for loop that will make it symmetric about, um, about, about the diagonal. So the rows and the columns is equal to the size in K. And we'll write a quick little nested for loop to get all of the rows and the columns. And whenever j is greater than i, we are going to be in the bottom part, or we're going to be below the diagonal. So we'll let the k of ij equal the, or the k of ji equal the k of ij. And now you'll see how it will become symmetric after, after running this uh, script. So you see it became symmetric about the diagonal. So this will help us when we're writing um, 
global stiffness matrices. It'll make it faster. So that's the first element. Now the second element is when n equals 2, the second element. And the second element starts with the second and third node. So there is some overlap between the first and the second element. And the third node, the second node starts with the third row and the third column. So we'll basically have to do the same process again and four, five, and six, four, five, and six. And then four, five, and six. So that's the second element right there. And then the third element, we do it the same way. And instead of starting at three, we start at five because the fifth row and the fifth column is where v2 and v3 are. Remember, each element has two nodes. So again, uh, 6, 7, and 8, rows 6, 7, and 8. And the beam matrix, the, the beam matrix will be the same. We won't change that. And here's the fourth element. And in the end, I actually take this and put it into a function and a for loop. So it really cleans it up. But here I'm just writing it in this way just to assist us with uh, visualizing how each element is created. Of course, if you have a lot of elements, you wouldn't do this. And this is the fourth element, or the last element of this um, structure. Okay, it looks like we have an error here. Okay, yes, so here I have to put for the beam matrix, or the single element matrix, I have to go from rows one, or columns one to three. So I, I forgot to change those. So I have to do those for all of the elements. And now if we run it, it should be okay. And there is the uh, global stiffness matrix. And I need to multiply that by EI over L cubed to get the actual uh, global stiffness matrix. I, we don't need parentheses, but I just put them there anyways. And now we define the unknowns, which are the force forces at the, rea at the ends and the force in the middle. Because those are unknowns, and the problem in the problem it's given that F2y and F4y are 50 kilonewtons in the downward direction. So those are the knowns and unknowns from the forces. Now the knowns and the unknowns from the moments, we know that there is nothing acting at nodes two, three, and four, so the moments there are zero. And then because this is a beam between two walls, uh, M1 and M5 are unknown. And now the knowns and the unknowns for the V. V is how much does the beam move in the Y direction, up and down. V2 and V4 are unknown, and V1, V3, and V5 are all zero as per boundary conditions. And now phi is the angle of deflection. The angles of deflection at 2, 3, and 4 are unknown. And at 1 and 5, because it is between two walls, it's equal to 0. And now we create our displacement matrix. Displacement matrix is simply 
the distance v1 v1 v2 v2 v3 v3 and then the force matrix i just called it fn is the f1 y m1 f2 y basically the force and the moment at each node so simple enough Right hand side is the stiff, global stiffness matrix times the displacement. And now we'll write a for loop to develop all of the equations of this uh, matrix. So we're going to expand our equations. So we're going to get 10 equations and 10 unknowns. So there's our equations. And now we'll put all our unknowns in one vector. And the unknowns are basically wherever I define sims previously, that's an unknown. And there should be exactly 10 unknowns. So if we count them, they will be 10. And now we'll use the solve function of MATLAB. We'll call it solution solve and equations, comma unknowns. And we have to use struct farm to access and convert it to a double to access uh, the values. So we run the script and we should get 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters or 1.4 millimeters of deflection, which is right there. That's the correct answer. All right. And now I cleaned it up a bit. Let's pause and go back. Okay, here I cleaned it up a little bit. I put the global stiffness matrix within its own M file. So it will reduce all the clutter. If we forward and we see I call a symmetrify function. And the symmetrify function basically it makes the matrix symmetric and uh, that's it for developing a beam global stiffness matrix of a beam element i hope you enjoyed it thank you